Hi everyone, it is January 18, 2018. A lot of people are posting on this Michigan uh, meteor that lit up the sky. I'm going to play some videos, but then I'm going to jump into an article, Bright Skies, that was uh, published in 1997, I believe, by a man who conducted research and investigation of meteors that were seen in Western Australia back in the 90s. And due to the technology that we have, it is really fascinating to see how many people come up with these definitive answers for what is taking place. I can't come up with any definitive answer. I can say that what we are seeing and what we have been seeing throughout the years with a lot of people posting on, oh, a meteorite here and a meteorite there and a huge meteor coming through and mainstream media right on it and claiming that they are meteors that do not have the characteristics of a natural meteor. So today with the technology, we can't really come up with any definitive answer of what is going on. But the article that I'm going to get into, the research of this man, he finding out that what was seen in Western Australia, there were not meteors, there were more likely experiments being conducted by the US military that had a base in Western Australia. These meteors did not have the characteristics of natural meteors, uh, and we'll get into that, but they also uh, were causing a lot of earthquakes, but no, no uh, earthquake evidence was spotted, but people were experiencing hearing loud explosions or booms along with their homes shaking. So this is, um, this is AP, suspected meteor lights up southern Michigan sky. Huge. Wow. A meteoroid, you know, uh, basically a small chunk of uh, rock or metal, uh, enters the atmosphere, and in front of it, it compresses the gases of our atmosphere, which heats them up. And so the, the heated gas basically vaporizes the meteoroid, and when that happens, we now refer to it as a meteor. Oh, thank you for that explanation. Um, and don't you feel much better? It's coming from AP. You know, I have my neighbor who has said numerous times, I heard it on TV. I heard it on TV. Americans are programmed to believe whatever they hear from mainstream media, which is really very frightening. Here, this is the fireball over Michigan. Did meteor really cause an earthquake? Residents of Southeast Michigan got either a thrill or a scare Tuesday when a rare meteor appeared to explode in the night sky. Its crash landing caused the equivalent of a magnitude 2.0 earthquake, according to the Washington Post. I went to turn and I noticed a ball of flame coming at an angle. A local man told the Detroit News. It just blew up into a bunch of sparks. I didn't even know what to think. It was kind of odd how orange the sky was behind me and this blaze of flame out of nowhere. Events like these occur dozens of times each year including a handful over Michigan within the last decade or so, according to Michigan Live. Okay, and I will link below to all of the videos so you can watch them, but they're talking about how uh, NASA, NASA is giving this explanation. Um, in several cities across Michigan reported seeing a bright and colorful flash travel through the sky before hearing a loud boom. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security confirmed that it was a meteor fireball. Residents in Alabama, California, Idaho, Colorado, and New Jersey reported hearing similar mysterious sounds. 
numerous videos recorded by security cameras and dash cams in the metro Detroit area and surrounding cities Tuesday night show a flash of bright light zooming across the sky, instantly turning night into day for an instant. The cause of the booms may have been discovered, but the noises from elsewhere in the country remained a mystery. An empty oil storage tank overpressurized near the region where residents were calling in about the boom, Colorado Oil and Gas Conservation Commission officials told the Denver Channel. Due to the pressure, the lid was blown from the tank, potentially resulting in a loud noise, officials explained. Okay, so uh, the loud boom, well, that happened to at an oil field or whatever. Um, we don't know. We don't know what's going on. And understand that all utility companies... Um, are under the uh, instruction of our Department of Energy, which is very involved in electromagnetic, microwave, laser, weaponry, very involved in the weather modification. And here, this man explains it as it was a missile and it was being blown up. So now it's coming down. Look. I did an up close on it, and it's coming down, and watch. It gets hit right there, and then it gets hit again, and then we're going to do it up close and personal. Bam, it gets hit right there, and then it gets hit there. You saw the missile come up? See the missile going up into it right there? Bam, contact, and here go a bigger one. Bam, hit it. So they hit it from two angles. Okay, and this woman caught something very interesting. No, they don't. All right, so clearly it was not a meteor. Was a meteor lighting up the sky in Arizona, November 2017. Stellar show from our solar system last night. Some may have even heard a sonic boom. People in the valley saw a bright flash of light, which we just showed you. It happened about uh, probably around 10.30 last night. Some of the best video was coming in from North Phoenix. Yeah, Team 12, Jessica Denova spoke with experts at Lowell Observatory to find out what flew across and lit up the southwestern sky. Did you see? Did you see it? It was a meteor. All right, so let's get into this article, Bright Skies, written by Harry Mason, published 1997. Harry Mason, 
uh, has long experience or had long experience in the region of Western Australia, conducting geological and geophysical field exploration surveys. He was asked to give his scientific advice on the risk of earthquake in Western Australia. He began at a small underground coal gold mine and noticed a newspaper article on the kitchen fridge door in a barrack. The article dated June 1, 1993. It was of a meteor fireball that had been seen by several observers flying from south to north. Uh, immediately followed was a 3.9 Richter scale earthquake. And there were mainstream media and uh, geophysicists were stating that this meteor caused the earthquake. Well, meteors are not associated with triggering earthquakes, not, not normally, but he noticed that this earthquake had sheared clean underground three-inch steel pipes at that collapsed underground drives and shafts. What does that remind you of? 9-11, the shearing clean, cutting steel beams, sheared clean, that collapsed the World Trade Center. The damage pattern was more like instantane instantaneous blast damage that is normally caused by nuclear explosions rather than standard earthquakes. Many observers reported that the fireball passed over making a pulsed roaring noise similar to a very loud road train diesel engine and after the seismic wave hit they heard a huge loud drawn out explosion we're hearing reports of these bizarre noises all around the world michigan there was a 2.0 earthquake that was recorded the night of this meteor um, what I'm saying is we cannot ever now definitively state the cause of so many events because of the technology that we now have. And this um, research, well, because of the major geological cure curiosity, Harry Mason <clears throat> embarked upon private research and he did not appreciate just where this research work and interest would lead him. And it led him to U.S. military bases, led him to electromagnetic weaponry also led him to the disappearance of the uh, Prime Minister in 1966 through 1967. Harold E. Holt disappeared while swimming, but Harold E. Holt uh, had stated to several that he was going to bring it, in, bring it up in the Parliament of this U.S. military base conducting very dangerous weapons. Well, he disappeared while swimming one Sunday afternoon. And no, investigation never revealed what happened to Harry E. Holt. So what was observed? Large orange red spherical fireball with a very small bluish white conical tail it had flown from low down in the south to the north. The fireball, some reported as cylindrical in form, more yellow, blue, white in color. Some heard a pulsed roaring or loud diesel engine sound well before it arrived. It had dropped off no glowing fragments, had no long luminous tail or sparks. And then it led to more and more meteors that were observed around the same time, none of which had any natural characteristics of a meteor. 
sounds heard well before it arrived were most definitely not normal electrophonic sounds from a meteor, which are usually described as pings or wheeze of low volume. It flew apparently parallel to the Earth's curvature in a long nap of the Earth, arcing trajectory at low altitude, not characteristic. And the videos that we have been seeing over the years are showing meteors with very similar characteristics of the meteors that were observed by people in Australia around this time, the early 90s, even the late 80s. And mainstream media was reporting it as meteors, but they were not. It was too low, it was too slow, it didn't have the tail that is naturally uh, uh, or that is associated with a natural meteor. Um, it bobbed around a bit for nearly two hours before disappearing suddenly. And some described it as a light switch that had just been thrown off. We see in the video with that woman who filmed what was in the sky, some white light that was bobbing around, going in all different directions. We've even heard people say that their dogs have gone crazy um, with noises that have been heard. Dogs at both locations went totally berserk, whining and howling and attempting to get off their leads. And it was probably due to the ultrasonic or very low frequency electromagnetic wave propagation that dogs are extremely, extremely sensitive to. Uh, so I'm going to spare you the overkill. But when he conducted an investigation of this so-called 3.9 earthquake that came immediately following the meteor, he could not find any evidence, failed to find any crater or ground anomaly of any kind in the area. So he came up with a lot of very interesting information. The and it goes into the Soviet government, the U.S. government, uh, or militaries, the Japanese military, and even the Japanese AUM Supreme Truth Set. Their claim to fame was the 1995 Tokyo subway gas attack. They had been looking for sheep stations in that area to buy in the exact same time that these meteors and earthquakes were suddenly going off in Western Australia. They claimed that they wanted to conduct experiments for the benefit of mankind. Well, he also found that the Japanese government um, was involved with this sect and that this sect was actually um, experimenting with electromagnetic weaponry. So meteors their natural characteristics, they usually travel at very hyper velocities, 25,000 miles per hour. And we see these meteors and videos throughout the years we've seen it going very slowly in the sky with very, very short tails, if any, at all. And their trajectory is quite low. The normal characteristics, 25,000 miles per hour. They do not fly the nap of the earth low level. Um, they usually have very long luminous tails, drop off fragments, and they're not associated with triggering earthquakes. But as he continued, he found more and more reports of these fireballs that were uh, in the exact same area. And the sightings mitigate strongly against meteors. He found it rather interesting that here he came across that there was an excess of 1,000 reports of these meteors. Some meteors 
the size of the moon, which we saw. The size of the moon, meteors flying, and they seem to be coming at greater frequency that they're spotted in the sky. These are extremely rare events. And yet what he found was that here we have these rare events happening in the exact same area of Western Australia. And yet the world's press was silent. Fireballs had been observed in all states of Australia. And they all had characteristics of something other than a meteor. And the most um, famous was the meteor at 2 a.m. the 1st of May 1995 in Perth. And mainstream media had reported it but he noticed that the mainstream media reporting stopped the day after. Mainstream media promising that they would investigate and then suddenly mainstream media in Australia it just there was no reporting on it whatsoever. No reporting from the world press. No media fragments had been recovered. So what his research led him to were the bases, the military bases, particularly the U.S. military base, Exmouth, um, the it was found to be a Tesla station in the Exmouth Peninsula, the U.S. very low frequency submarine communication base. It was called Tower Zero, placed upon a hilltop surrounded by 11 equally spaced smaller towers, each about 1,000 feet high. Think about the Gwen Towers all over the place. They had concentric circular loops. And what he found was that the U.S. military was conducting experiments to induce earthquakes, man-made induced earthquakes, the U.S. Exmouth test site contained a Tesla or Scalar electromagnetic weapon system which had been active since 1969. And they began conducting in 1970 these earthquake experiments in the Great Sandy Desert. What they found, what he found was 10 kilometer equally spaced earthquakes, each of 3 to 5 Richter power, no, earthquakes don't uh, show up equally spaced. But the U.S. government had been there since the mid-60s. The Australian Army had been guarding the area. It was off limits to the public. Oil companies, the French oil company, had taken out a permit to do oil exploration, and he found that he couldn't get access to records that should have been public, but they were sealed. So I'll link below to this article, but he also tracked the trajectory, calculated that it was coming from these bases and the great circle geographic polar route north from Exmouth um, to Hong Kong to Arecibo, Puerto Rico, um, Argentina, uh, the U.S. Antarctic bases. These are where we have these harp stations back to northwest Australia. The fascinating coincidences were the disappearance of Holt, Prime Minister, and the death of some 
workers at the sheep stations where the earthquakes were the earthquake experiments were being conducted but by utilizing pulsed radar beams of high power they can create and project charged electromagnetic plasma via waveguide layers in the ionosphere this can be triggered to cause severe earth dielectric induced currents causing electronic damage human electrocution and other collateral damage upon ground targets located thousands of miles of, uh, distant from where these blasts occur. He states in this article that what they were seeing in Australia may have been holograms, may have been plasma ball balls set off by the Tesla Tesla coil that they had at the US military base. And he goes through an awful lot of these sightings, finding that they weren't just in Australia, but also in England, and comes across um, a woman who documented the sighting of one in Eureka, California. Blue fireball with a gold tail. Huge flash of light. The media in California promised to let the people know the next day there was no more coverage. So, um, we can't we can't know for sure what is going on because of the technology that we have. So I will link below to all articles. I hope you're all doing well.